Baseball is looking to speed up the game and make it more exciting for fans with a new set of rules. Among the changes, a pitch clock that gives pitchers 15 seconds to throw with bases empty and 20 seconds with runners on base. The new rules made their debut Friday during the first spring training games. Joining us is Jim Bowden. He is a CBS Sports headquarters baseball analyst and former general manager of the Cincinnati Reds and the Washington Nationals. Welcome to Jim. So will this new clock throw off some of the pitchers? Well, look, I don't think there's any question that there are some pitchers that are going to have to adjust because they're not used to throwing the ball to the next batter within 15 seconds. I think the biggest name in terms of starting pitchers would be Shohei Otani of the Los Angeles Angels, who normally takes longer than that. In the bullpen, uh, Kenley Jansen, the closer for the Boston Red Sox, a reliever that really struggles to get the ball in during that time span. But what we found in the minor leagues, and Major League Baseball instituted this in the minor leagues for a couple of years to make sure they got all the kinks out. And what happened was the pitchers were able to adjust relatively easy. So, look, I think in the month of March, they're going to work on it. I think there might be some growing pains the first few weeks of April when the season starts. But I think by May, I think most pitchers will be in a rhythm and it will not be a factor. So what about the hitters? What's the impact with this pitch clock? Well, that's a great question because today was the first day, as you mentioned, that it was implemented. Manny Machado with the San Diego Padres was the first player to get a strike called on him. Now, the hitter has eight seconds to get ready for the pitcher as he has 15 seconds. Manny Machado was not ready in the eight seconds, and the umpire called a strike on him. Now, this is not something that we expect is going to be happening on a regular basis. I think it's going to happen a lot in spring training. It might happen again maybe the first week or two of the regular season. But I think the hitters and pitchers will get used to this, make the adjustment. And again, the biggest part of this is it's going to cut down the time of the game by about 26 minutes. About 26 minutes? You know, a that, lot of that fans much? did not like the fact that a lot wow. of baseball games go three hours or three hours and 15 minutes or even longer than that. This is going to really shorten the game and if it's if it's cut down by 20 to 25 minutes, uh, that, that's going to be significant, I think, for the fans. OK, so let's move on to the bases. They're expanding from 15 to 18 inches on each size. So will we see more stolen bases? Uh, stolen bases are going to go way up. Now, All also right. keep in mind, they also changed the rule for pitchers where they can only disengage from the rubber three times. That means you can either throw over to first base three times to try to pick off a runner or you can step off the rubber, but if you do that, that counts as an engagement. On the third disengagement, if you don't pick him off first base, it's called a balk and the runner gets second base. So that means the pitchers are really limited on the number of times they can throw over to first base to keep the base runner safe. So not only is the base runner going to be much closer to second base, but we're really restricting the pitchers and the ways that they have to keep them close to first. So I would expect that the person that leads Major League Baseball in stolen bases this year will be over 60, maybe maybe 65. Wow, Last much. year, John Birdie of the Marlins stole 41 bases. That led Major League Baseball. So you're going to see a lot of teams running. I talked to Jerry DePoto, the general manager of the Seattle Mariners. I talked to Mike Hazen, the GM of the Arizona Diamondbacks. Both of them told me they plan on being extra aggressive, especially out of the gate, to take advantage of the rule with their fast players. So I want to get in two final questions. There's also a ban on the shift on defense, which increases a player's chances of getting a base hit. Is that going to be good for the game? Oh, I think it's great for the game myself uh, because it brings athleticism back to the game. It also gives an advantage back to those left-handed pull hitters. You know, I'm talking about Kyle Schwarber of the Philadelphia Phillies, Juan Soto of the San Diego Padres, Anthony Rizzo of the New York Yankees. These are pull hitters that really were hurt by the shift. See, and it's not just the fact you can only have two infielders on each side of second base, but now you also have to have all four infielders in on the dirt. So the past several years with the shift, teams were putting the second baseman or shortstop in short right field. So when you had those big left-hand hitters like Soto and Schwarber and Rizzo, they were hitting line shots, base hit to shallow right, but they ended up being outs because the the fielders could position there. Well, they can't position th themselves there anymore. So batting average is definitely going to go up here. 
and you're going to see a lot more athletic, athleticism that, that we saw before. I think the brand of baseball, quite frankly, is going to be a lot more exciting for the fan base. The games are going to be quicker and, and swifter in, in times of pace. I think the changes that are being made, although they're dramatic, I think it's going to put baseball in a much better shape with their fans, especially the young fans. Jim Bowden, thank you. Thank you.